Your favorite Pokemon sucks, but it doesn't have to. Over the years, the Pokemon company has gotten more open to buffing older Pokemon to either keep them relevant or to make them actually competitively viable for once. These buffs will come in a variety of forms, like a new move, new ability, or new items. Ironically enough, the Pokemon which got outright stat buffs almost never see a jump in viability. That being said, there are Pokemon who receive buffs that change their lives more drastically than an aging billionaire's hair transplant. Is this Pokemon old? Yes but you can't deny that that ability makes them look like one of those new Gen 10 beasts. So today, let's discuss buffs that saved Pokemon. If you enjoyed this video at any point in time, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more competitive Pokemon content. As a matter of fact, you should subscribe right now because of a playlist full of content just like this that I know you'll enjoy once this one ends. And if you think you're subscribed, do me a favor and double check because like only half of my viewers actually are. With that, let's get into it. All right, let's get this dude right out of the way. Zamazenta was the most mid-restricted legendary of all time back in Generation 8 when it was released, where Zacian had the best typing in the game, an insane speed stat, and a frankly ridiculous attack stat which got a free boost on every switch in, Zamazenta was just fat. Normally, a bulky steel fighting type would be pretty solid in competitive Pokemon. Zamazenta had a lot working against it though. While Zamazenta had a move which dealt double damage to Dynamax Pokemon in Behemoth Bash, it itself couldn't Dynamax, and since it required the Rusted Shield to turn into its stronger form, Zamazenta wasn't able to hold the leftovers item to get passive recovery turn to turn. So any damage dealt to Zamazenta was mostly permanent unless a partner or terrain healed it. And worst of all, for some reason, Game Freak thought it'd be a good idea to not give it access to Body Press. And to be honest, they might have been right. Because in Generation 9, Zamazenta gained access to this move, which uses the defense stat of a Pokemon to attack rather than its attack stat. Given Zamazenta already had a free plus one defense each game on Switch in and stab on this move, it was already a really threatening Pokemon. Not only does Zamazenta not care about Intimidate drops from the likes of Incineroar, but since Iron Defense boosts its defense stat, it could effectively kill two birds with one stone by getting bulkier while hitting harder each time it uses the move. While a year ago I posted a video explaining how Zamazenta was one of the worst restricted legendaries of all time, today it's been one of the most consistent and strongest options in tournaments with a regional championship already under its belt. Speaking of fighting types getting way better in Generation 9, we can't forget about Gallade. I'm gonna be real here, I've always been sort of a Gallade hater. I can't exactly explain why, but whenever I see a Gallade, Weavile, or Infernape on a team, it just kind of screams Timmy Super Strong Squad. And for the most part, whenever I saw it on Team Preview prior to Generation 9, it was kind of a dead giveaway that the match was going to be kind of easy. This is no longer the case because in Generation 9, Gallade got access to a brand new ability in Sharpness. This ability gave it a whopping 50% boost to cutting moves like Sacred Sword, Leaf Blade, Psycho Cut, and Population Bomb. Where before Gallade was a fighting type with pretty low powered moves like Psycho Cut keeping it going, it now became a nuke. Sacred Sword from Gallade is one of the strongest and most reliable moves in the game. Because Sacred Sword ignores stat changes when dealing damage, the move is great for breaking past setup Pokemon like Registeel and Gudra, while outright beating evasion strats like that of Alolan Muck and Smeargle. At 90 base power, it's already a really great fighting move, but after the sharpness boost, it becomes a whopping 135 base power, making it a whole 15 points stronger than close combat with none of the drawbacks. And that's before the stab boost getting it to 220 two base power. Psycho Cut also got boosted by Sharpness, allowing for Gallade to now have decent psychic damage off of the now 105 base power. Nowadays, Gallade is a fringe yet powerful option for Trick Room teams by being a check to Incineroar while providing support in Wide Guard to block moves like Water Spout or Astral Barrage. This one buff was all it took to make this Gen 4 relic relevant once again in competitive Pokemon. Sometimes it takes just one change to fix older Pokemon. Take for example all of the Pokemon in Gen 7 who received weather setting abilities. Newer players might not be aware of just how mediocre Torkoal, Pelipper, and Gigalith were back in the day. Well, actually most people know how mediocre Gigalith is, but trust me, it was, it was worse once, I promise. That being said, the other two here are actually VGC staples to this day, due to their new abilities. Torkoal was originally a mediocre, bulky, pure fire type that had nothing special going for it other than just being adorable. I mean, look at this little guy. While it did have some cool tools like Yawn and Clear Smog, there wasn't much of a reason to run it over any other fire type. However, in Generation 7, it was granted the sun setting ability of Drought. Its low speed combined with access to Drought meant that regardless of what Pokemon your opponent leads off with, since Torkoal is slower, its Drought will activate second, meaning sun will always be active on turn one start. This low speed was further abused by Trick Room players 
by having Charcoal Torkoal sweep through entire teams with the move Eruption, a fire move that hits both opponents and caps out at 150 base power if the user is at full health. With this, Torkoal was able to use its Sun to further boost the move and break through even resisted Pokemon, something that it does even better in Generation 9 with access to Terra Fire to boost the power of the move even further. It even has a combination with Lilligant, where Lilligant is able to use After You to allow for Torkoal to move first, while also having double speed due to Chlorophyll, allowing for Lilligant itself to threaten attacks or sleep powder. Pelipper gained access to Drizzle, allowing for it to not only set rain on Switchin, but granting it a sure hit stab hurricane and an insanely powerful weather ball. Pelipper went from being one of the most forgettable flying types with a water type holding it back to being the face of rain teams. Not only was Pelipper now able to set up rain for Swift Swim users like Ludicolo or Kingdra, but it could even set up Tailwind for them, making it so even if the opponent gets a Tailwind off or an Icy Wind, the Swift Swim Sweeper will still outspeed them. Nowadays, it's still a top tier Pokemon despite competing with restricted legends like Kyogre and Calyrex Ice Rider. This is due to it having access to Wide Guard, making it not only a strong support Pokemon, but allowing it to be a hard wall to Calyrex Ice Rider since it can't hit it with Glacial Lance or High Horsepower. Oh, and Gigalith doesn't drop the Hydro Pump anymore because of Sand. Yay, Gigalith, you get to be good until Tyranitar shows up. Now, where Gigalith got better because of Sandstorm, Landorus on the other hand got stronger because it no longer needed a Sandstorm. This might sound weird, but Landorus wasn't super strong in BGC at least not Landorus Incarnate. Where the other two genies preferred being in their Incarnate forms due to their busted abilities in Prankster, Landorus was far more powerful in its Therian form due to its massive attack stat and access to Intimidate. This changed in Generation 8 once players got access to the Ability Patch. The Ability Patch allowed for Pokemon to be given their hidden ability manually, and since Pokemon Cotton Older Generations weren't legal in BGC prior to the Battle Ready NPC, Landorus didn't have access to its insane hidden ability of Sheer Force. It was stuck using Sand Force, an ability which powers up Rock, Ground, and Steel type attacks if there's a Sandstorm active, but Sheer Force boosts the power of any attack with a secondary effect by 30% at the cost of that secondary effect never happening. Beyond that, it has a hidden property which blocks the damage taken by the user if they're holding a life orb and they're using a sheer force boosted attack. Take for example, Earth Power, where normally Earth Power is a measly 90 base power, Landorus Incarnate's sheer force life orb Earth Power is 90 times 1.3 times 1.3 times 1.5 which is a ridiculous 228 base power. It's practically a delete button, and since Landorus gets sheer force boosts on Sludge Bomb, you can't even switch in Assault Vest Rillaboom to resist and absorb the hit without risking that Pokemon as well. This buff has led to Landorus Incarnate overtaking Landorus Therian as the best Landorus form in VGC. And if you know VGC history, that's no small feat. Breathing new life into Gen 5 Pokemon is pretty notable, but Gen 1 Pokemon becoming competitively relevant after years of mediocrity is also pretty crazy. Dragonite has probably the best arc of all the Gen 1 Pokemon, where it wasn't notable for years even as a pseudo-legend with great stats, the change to the ability Inner Focus in Generation 8 made it a much more threatening Pokemon. This became even more drastic in Generation 9 when it gained access to Terastalization. While Dragonite has always had an impressive 134 attack stat, only when Inner Focus was change to make the user immune to Intimidate did it have its full potential unlock. Dragonite was not only able to click Dragon Dance to set up without fear of Fake Out or Intimidate drops keeping it under control, but instead of setting up at times, Dragonite could also opt into running immediate damage. Dragonite was able to deal massive damage to the opposing team by using a set with Choice Band Terra Normal Extreme Speed. By putting it next to a partner Chen Pao, this damage was further increased due to Chen Pao's ability of Sword of Ruin, to the point where neutral targets would end up getting one shot by this plus two priority move. And even if the opponent got cheeky and tried to switch in an Ndidi or Ferrigarath, they'd need to find some way to tank a Choice Band Sword of Ruin Outrage. Fun fact, this move is actually what bodied me on stream at Portland Regionals this year, and I'm still recovering from losing the Outrage 50-50. But Dragonite isn't the only Gen 1 Pokemon to skyrocket to relevance. In Generation 8, Weezing of all Pokemon was granted a brand new signature ability, and this ability warps the game like no other. Weezing was granted Neutralizing Gas, an ability which turns off almost all other abilities. Due to this, Weezing being on the field can create lots of situations that wouldn't otherwise be possible, like Tornadus being able to taunt in Psychic Terrain, or a Pokemon being able to protect against Urshifu. It even led to the rise of Regigigas in Generation 8 VGC. By combining Weezing with Regigigas, you could disable Slow Start, an ability which has Regigigas' attack and speed stat for the first 5 turns it's on the field, and turning this Pokemon into a one-shotting machine. And while this was later patched out of the game, for a while neutralizing gas wouldn't turn off Protosynthesis 
leading to Roaring Moon Weezing teams dominating the in-game ladder and a few tournaments. Who would have thought that turning off abilities entirely would make a Pokemon competitively viable? I, I certainly didn't, it's only removing an entire mechanic in the game, but you know. Now, I'm sure there are some other Pokemon that receive buffs that save them competitively that I missed in this video. So if I did, be sure to let me know in the comment section down below. Someone's going to mention Shiftry. I know someone's going to mention Shiftry down there. I don't think Shiftry's that good. It's cool, right? It got Wind Rider. I don't think that it saved it. I think Shiftry's still pretty mid, but you know, let me know any other ones that I might have missed. And while you're down there, let me know what topic you want me to cover next. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. It'd mean the world to me. And if you want to support me even further, you can check out my Patreon page or become a YouTube channel member by clicking the join button below the video. This gets you sneak peeks at future videos and even some bonus content. You'll also see your name at the end of my videos like all these lovely people. A special thanks to to my most boosted supporters, Avatar67, Jordan Harridge, and Ranger Lance for the generous pledges. Another way to support me is to check out all the videos in the playlist on screen right now. I know you'll find something in there that you'll enjoy. I also have a second channel where I talk about the current VGC metagame trends and a Twitch channel where I stream, both of which are going to be in the description down below. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.